Hi everyone. Today we have uh, James Tidd visiting. He's the uh, Vice President of Systems Engineering at Swift Navigation, our customer. So very welcome, James. Great to have you here. Great to be here. Thanks for having so, me. So I, I would be very interested in uh, learning a bit more about your company and uh, how you ended up there. Sure. So uh, my background is I've been doing navigation systems for around 20 years now. Um, I've moved around between large companies and, and startups. I've been with Swift Navigation now for four years. Uh, Swift Navigation is a company. Um, we were founded 12 years ago in San Francisco, and our mission is to help people navigate and understand the world. Uh, to do that, we've built a precise GNSS positioning system that we have developed using cloud technology, and we've tried to modernize that, that type of service uh, across the globe. I see. And, and what is the level of precision you are typically targeting? So we target down below 10 centimeters in the centimeter range. It can vary depending on the application and customer need, but that's kind of the, the, the ballpark that we aim for. I see. And uh, in what ways are your uh, technology different from other solutions? So as a young company, we've had the benefit of being able to adopt many modern technologies. Uh, algorithmic methods, uh, cloud technology, and even the, the the signals that are sent from the GPS and Galileo and Beidou satellites. Mm. So we've, being young, we've made use of all the modern technologies that are available to us. And, and how does that affect the the customer experience? So cloud technology allows us to be far more available than than traditional hardware servers. Ease of integration for our customers. We also make sure that we provide a solution to our customers rather than just giving them technology or products. Positioning is an easy concept to understand, but it's very hard to make work universally. And that's what we try and do for our customers. Absolutely. So let, let's move on to some of the challenges you have been facing. Sure. So um, moving things are often very heavy, like cars and trains. They need to be safe. And so the industries we work in put a lot of demands on not only the products that we make, but the processes we use to make those products. And we've had um a san francisco attitude to development which is great we move fast we develop things very rapidly we use modern processes but we also have the constraints of safety critical systems which means we have to be very rigorous with our processes sure. um, so that's been one of our challenges keeping up speed but maintaining quality and rigor okay so speaking of challenges you decided to embark on an mbse initiative. Can you tell us, say a little bit about the background and uh, what, what was, was your reasoning at the time? Sure. So we have, a, um, we have a very complex system. It includes cloud, software, hardware, and algorithms. So a very diverse, very um, complex system. And we work in industries where safety, cybersecurity, quality are paramount and governed by standards. And so we needed something that allowed us to meet those standards whilst developing a complex system. We also are a Silicon Valley, San Francisco startup. And so speed is in our DNA. And we didn't really want to compromise our ability to execute um, just because we are working in industries which have these uh, standards. And can you elaborate on uh, how does that play out in practice? The, how, how you need to relate to those standards? They, they're quite strict. They're quite governed which is a good thing because these one tons of metal that drive around on our streets should be safe. But they've been written in a relatively traditional method. We wanted to bring them into a way that could apply to the complexity of the system we were building, a connected system, and to align with our company DNA of, of moving quickly using cloud technology. Considering the, the way that you operate and the the partners that you need to collaborate with, what, what are the challenges in uh, uh, collaborating and communicating across different uh, disciplines within a development project? So things always go wrong at the interfaces between different technologies, and that's where systems engineering sits. Um, finding a common language so everyone understood exactly what their role was and what was meant at the concept and architecture level was very important for us, not only to communicate with the internal teams, but also to communicate with our partners and customers. We work in a very interconnected ecosystem and we have to have clear understanding of what we do and what everyone else is responsible for. So I imagine this is a pretty complex environment to operate in. It is both technologically and from a business aspect. There are lots of interfaces and um, lots of overlaps between the offerings and, uh, and business models. 
so then at one point you decided you needed a better solution to manage your systems engineering. So can you elaborate a bit on how you made the choice and what kind of solution you ended up with? We went through an assessment of the tools on the market. We had decided model-based systems engineering was for us because of the flexibility and appropriateness to our company. We went through the different tools. We wanted them to be able to handle cybersecurity, safety, um, quality standards, but also our diversity of technologies, hardware, cloud, and software. We found that uh, Katia Magic was the most adaptable to our needs and could encompass qualification to all of these standards as well. And that is what you have now implemented and started uh, using. So can you elaborate a bit on how you are actually using the tool in your team? So we have our requirements, our architecture, our fault tree analysis and other safety deliverables, and some of our cybersecurity deliverables as well, all within the tool. Um, it's our one ring to rule them all, single source of truth that we use for our um, engineering department. And uh, to get the whole team embarked on this journey and starting using such a tool, what do you think is the main uh, success criteria to your, in your experience? So if you really want this to be adopted, um, then you really need internal champions. You need people who believe in it, who will drive it forward. You need executive support and you need um, capable people who understand the benefits of MBSC before they've realized it in their own workplace. And so a supportive boss, keen champion and a very capable team delivering the rollout. And capable doesn't just mean good systems engineers. It means they have to be good with people as well, because there are some restrictions to uptake when people are having to learn something new. And those experienced engineers also have to be mentors and coaches so that the rollout goes smoothly. And I was also wondering, can you comment on how MBSC relates to more agile methodologies like DevOps and so forth? Definitely. Well, I think they, they fit like hand in glove. Um, MBSC is a modern approach to systems engineering. Systems engineering is often treated as an old way of working and very waterfall centric. Um, MBSC allows far more agility and we work in a very agile manner. We work in a DevOps manner and the ability to dynamically adjust our system architecture and requirements uh, allows us to be agile even in the concept and system level. If we were manually handling requirements in text, then it would be a long winded process to make those changes, but it allows us to be agile and take the learning from customer interaction and prototyping all the way back to our concept and system architecture very rapidly. And we already talked about necessary changes to processes, but in, in what way did it affect your organization? Did you organize in a different way following the introduction of the tool and MBSC? So we did pull some people into a bespoke systems engineering team um, to make sure that the, the systems engineering work was carried out thoroughly. Uh, there was obviously the rollout that we've mentioned, um, but organizationally wide, we have to make sure that the CFO is happy, it's an efficient process and things don't cost too much. Um, the sales team are happy that we're delivering the collateral that they need in order to engage customers, but we've managed to do that. Uh, so that's... Um, Organization-wide, there have been benefits for everyone. So keeping the CFO happy, that is a trick. Indeed, yeah. And in that process, Techni were very uh, good at working with us on the purchasing plan and, and licenses and how we actually go about um, ensuring that we have a tool we can rely on in the future. Good to hear. Moving on uh, to results. So what are the main outcomes from the project so far? And uh, are there any measurable benefits? Uh, definitely. Well, we, we measure effectiveness, efficiency, and sustainability. The effect of effectiveness is that we've managed to gain certifications in the standards that we were targeting in the automotive industry. We believe that we are far more effective in our systems engineering processes, that we can achieve the same with three or four engineers that we could with 10. So efficiency is very good. And finally, sustainability. We have a tool that we're going to have as a central part of our development processes for years to come. And sustainability is not always mentioned in the context of system engineering. So can you elaborate a bit on what that means for you? Also, oh, in, in, the, in the metrics that we use to define if the project was a success or not, we need this to be um, a fundamental part of our development process. So it needs to be... Um, 
uh, a solution which we can use and grow and it needs to grow with the company as well um, systems engineering does like to think of not only the delivery but the service and in-life operations and this tool has to be able to scale with us as a company and be used by hopefully the thousands of employees we have in the years to come And if you think about what, what the key success factors are in bringing in a new tool, new ways of working, new organization, what are the things that pops to mind? It's definitely people. People really help any change process. Displaying business value early on is often a key thing to get people on board, especially people who aren't in the rollout, who are just observing it from externally. So key business value and good people are two of the real big success factors. Um, now, it's not just the people in the company, having support from customers and partners is good and having support from the supplier of the tool as well, both to give messaging internally so we can explain the benefits of MBSE. And in this respect, Techni were very good and knowledgeable in helping us sell the, the technology internally. Do you have any advice for uh, other customers embarking on the same journey? I think make sure it's right for you. Um, I believe it's right for many companies, but make sure it's right for you. Uh, seek advice. Don't try and answer everything yourself because MBSE is a, a modern technology and it's evolving. Um, make sure you um, prepare both the exec team um, and your internal systems engineering team for the change and then persist. Uh, sometimes you don't reach the top of the mountain without hard work, but when you get there, the view is very nice. It's worth the journey. And uh, some people think that MBSC is mainly for the larger enterprises and corporations, while you are not a super big company. How not do yet. you see that? Yeah. Um, so our opinion on that is it hasn't hindered our development velocity and we have to meet these standards. Smaller companies often avoid going for qualification to standards because they see it as, uh, as a break to their development process. We have to qualify for those and we've noticed it hasn't been a break. We've actually achieved what we would normally achieve with 10 plus systems engineers with a team of three or four. Pretty impressive. It's been hard work, but we're really glad with the results. Thank you. And uh, if looking forward, have, have you planned a, a roadmap for the future development of, uh, of these tools and the methodologies moving forward? Yes. So um... The, the team themselves, there's only so much you can self-learn. So we'll be looking at uh, get, getting some training to get our team to the next level. Um, we're also looking at using the tool more, tool more thoroughly. So we develop a lot of algorithms and simulation. And so we may want to bring that into the tool as well. And uh, I'm also curious, when it, again, with respect to your technology, how do you see this uh, influencing the, the future of mobility? Um, so we expect everyone to know where they are very accurately, uh, whether it's your phone, your car or your lawnmower. Um, we see a future where mobile um, robots know where they are and what they're doing uh, very precisely such that humans don't have to interact with them as much or what they're doing is far safer than they would be otherwise. So we expect mass market adoption of precision positioning. It's a prosperous future, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. It has been really interesting and great to have you here. So uh, thanks a lot for sharing your, your experiences with us. And uh, best of luck with your uh, solutions moving forward. And uh, I mean, with your technology, I'm very confident that you will find a way. Thanks very much.